So in terms of the linear versus non-linearity, the ideal straight line defines the ideal linear characteristics of an element. The so linear equation for the input and output relationship and in many practical cases the straight line relationship is not obeyed and the element is said to be non-linear. So non-linear characteristics can then be quantified in terms of deviations from the ideal straight line and the non-linear equation for the input output relationship will be this one. The non-linearity can, can be defined in terms of the function ni which is the difference between actual output and the ideal straight line. So we see that this is the non-linear function and this is the actual one oi and this is the ideal straight line. So in this way we can rewrite this uh, relationship nonlinearity as the actual minus the linear one or if you uh, shuffle it again so you can write the actual as a combination of uh, this linear equation plus the uh, nonlinear function. Uh, we, we have to uh, be very careful that nonlinearity is additive here. In some cases it is not. So this is a specific case in which the nonlinearity is appearing in, with the linear model in terms of additivity. Nonlinearity means it will vary as the input changes. So let's plot the nonlinearity function against the input. So when we plot the, uh, the nonlinearity against input, we see that there is uh, a maximum peak of the nonlinearity and then it goes back to there. So it is better to quantify that we calculate the maximum of the nonlinearity in the whole range. So to calculate this maximum, it is better that we find out in the in the curve what is the maximum. So n hat is the single value which is corresponding to the maximum or peak of the nonlinearity against the linear one, and then we divide it by the full scale deflection of the output. Since nonlinearity is basically the output, if you see here in this graph, basically nonlinearity is not on the x-axis. Nonlinearity is something which is appearing on the output axis. Okay. So when you calculate the maximum and try to find the maximum percentage of it, so this maximum will be divided by the max, uh, the span of the output, so full scale deflection. This way we can calculate the maximum uh, nonlinearity. So here, here is an example, consider a pressure sensor where the maximum difference between the actual and its ideal straight line output values is 2 millivolts. So n hat is 2 millivolts here and assume that the output span is 100 millivolts. So, so O max minus O min is also given as 100 millivolts. When you use this formula, we will arrive to this value of 2% uh, as a maximum percent nonlinearity. <coughs> In many cases, the output and input can be represented by this uh, polynomial function. We will do with this. We will come back to this uh, topic in the regression. And this is an example. <laughs> this is an example of uh, temperature variation of the thermo electric EMF at the junction of two dissimilar metals. Copper constant and type, this is type T thermocouple and we have the polynomial e equation here that is relating the uh, the output, the, uh, the EMF of the uh, thermocouple with the temperature. You see this is a progression 38.74 times T then 3.19 10 to power minus 2 times T square and then 10 T cube and higher order terms. Okay, so this is a non-linear non-linear model in which which resembles this. The output is a uh, is in terms of the polynomial of the input. So this is a good example of this model. And from this model, we can work work out for let's say the ideal. So this ideal, if you see this one equation 2.7b. Uh, if I ask you, for example, you, this may be your task that find this model. Et is given by this 2.78 and then you have to find the linear equation which is uh, 52.170 D. so prove that that uh, that how that the 2.7 B is derived from 2.7 A this is the linear model and then after having the linear model and we have the non-linear model and the uh, we have the actual model and the uh, ideal linear model we can go and find the equation for the non-linearity so nt will be equals to et et is this whole equation to equation 2.7 a and e ideal is equation 2.7 b so sub subtract uh, this equation 2.7 a from 2.7 b you we will get the function for the non-linearity okay so notice it down that non-linearity is also in terms of a polynomial 
this is an another example of nonlinearity in which a thermistor is used and this thermistor uh, the resistance is changing in terms of the exponential now there are some examples example number one a thermocouple is a th temperature sensor which produces uh, an electrical voltage in microvolts relating to the uh, temperature in degree centigrade the equation is given by this uh, 38.74 t plus 0.033 t square plus 0.000207 t cube so this is the polynomial of uh, third order and we have to find the temperature we have uh, this is used for between 0 to 250 degrees now you have to find in a you have to find a linear model from 0 to 250 degrees and then find the nonlinearity function uh, that will be the same same way uh, this one nt this is how the nonlinearity function you will find using uh, on page on slide 24 using the equation a e t minus e ideal then you have to find the uh, percentage of nonlinearity at 100 degrees and find the uh, nonlinearity at 100 degrees as a percentage of full scale deflection and uh, here comes the uh, solution i will go through the step by step you try by yourself so the first thing will be first we need to find the linear model for linear model we will focus on point number one and point two so we need a minimum point and maximum point so minimum point will be evaluated will be calculated at zero degrees and the maximum point will be calculated to 50 degrees note that we have just given the equation and the input value and we don't have the output value here so our task will be zero. you have to put the temperature zero degrees in the, this equation and 250 degrees in this equation to get the output temp, uh, EMF at these two inputs so while replace so uh, you place uh, in equation one uh, you substitute the value of I min equals to zero degrees solve it and you arrive to output which is the E at zero degrees equals to zero then you substitute the I max 250 degrees in the same equation number one you put it there and you solve it and then you find the value of the uh, EMF at 250 degrees 14994 microvolts so now you have these two points after having the input and output points which I mean is the input point is the minimum and this is the maximum point so by using these two points now we calculate we can calculate the sensitivity K K is around 60 microvolts per degree centigrade it means uh, for every degree for every one degree centigrade change there will be a change of 60 microvolts and by having this value k we can calculate the y-intercept so finally we arrive to the uh, equation which is 60 t this is the linear equation now use the uh, the original equation minus the linear equation so uh, using the ori original equation minus this, this linear equation we arrive to the non-linearity equation so nt is the expression nt is not the value nt is the complete equation so nonlinearity as a function of temperature you put the value of temperature for example if you put zero so you will get the nonlinearity value at zero if you put the value of t equals to 100 degrees centigrade so at 100 degrees centigrade you will get the uh, nonlinearity value at 100 degrees centigrade now coming back to this second part we just done a we are done with a and b c is find the percent nonlinearity at 100 degrees percent person nonlinearity at 100 degrees to calculate the person nonlinearity at 100 degrees uh, what we have to do is uh, substitute this value 100 degrees in the previously uh, this equation nt and calculate this value and you will arrive to this value and at 100 degrees nonlinearity at 100 degrees is minus 1587 micro volts minus means it may minus or plus means either it is above the line or below the straight line now finally to find the nonlinearity at 100 degrees as percentage of full skill deflection we have n t n hat or n t here this is n t and then the full skill deflection so n at 100 is minus 1587 micro volts and the full scale deflection we calculated was 14994 microvolts so you calculate this and then, then this is what we found that at 100 degrees the maximum nonlinearity will be uh, 11 percent in the second example we calculate the maximum nonlinearity as a percentage of the full scale deflection of the thermocouple uh, now we have to find the maximum nonlinearity notice that previously we just calculate the nonlinearity at 100 degrees. There is no maximum nonlinearity here. Okay, 
so in this section in this in second example the same example we continue but here the the problem is now we need to calculate the maximum nonlinearity as a percentage of full scale deflection so for maximum nonlinearity what we need to do is we take this uh, this function just like any per other polynomial function and to find the maximum of a function by mathematics is you differentiate it and then you equate it to zero and the reason for this is for example if we have a uh, let's say if we have a graph like this one and we have a curve this is input and we have some kind of output or a function as a output okay so if we uh, if so if there is a function here and we are trying to find the maximum of this function this is moving uh, this is uh, uh, let me uh, erase a bit here okay okay so okay now assume that the function is like this increasing so what will be the maximum the maximum will come here is if it is monotonically increasing and the moment it goes down this is the point when the slope is zero at this point the slope is zero this point so the differential will be equals to zero this is how we are going to calculate the maximum not here so we differentiate this equation we differentiate this equation and uh, we differentiate this equation and so and equate it to zero so we differentiate this equation equate it to zero and solve for the t since this is a quadratic term so we will arrive to two values of uh, t at 139 degrees and minus 245 degrees we will reject this one why we should we reject this one think about it and we will take 139 degrees centigrade this one acceptable okay so i will leave for you to think about it and comment uh, on it uh, afterwards that why uh why uh, this should be rejected so I due to negative yeah one possible reason may be uh, because the it is negative and it is not yes. a sufficient reason the reason is if we if i go back to here uh, we say we say that this sensor is being used this to measure between 0 to 250 degrees centigrade so any value that will come within this limit will be uh, uh, will be acceptable so it's not about the negativity it's about the range so 139 exists between the range of the sensor and this minus 245 is not in the range so the maximum nonlinearity will occur at 139 degrees centigrade uh, so we have this value one at one so, so so now we have the value of t now put uh, substitute back this uh, t value 139 into the basic equation of the nonlinearity, uh, you will get one minus 1755 microvolts and substitute back in for the to calculate the maximum nonlinearity as a percentage of full scale deflection, we will arrive to 11.7. Okay, so th that's all for this uh, lecture. And uh, see, for any questions, please uh, write me to these emails.